overwhelmed by all the data that's hitting the safety departments now. We've got the telematics, we've got the hard braking, the arse turning. Holy crap, there's a shitload of stuff coming. Guy Orlick this week, our guest on the Trucking Risk and Insurance podcast, thinks he has the answer. Join us next. Welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance podcast. And Guy, welcome back. Guy. Take a minute, first of all, and introduce yourself and tell us about this new company that has just recently been founded. Thanks, uh, Chris and John. Uh, nice to be back. And it's awesome to continue uh, the discussion with you guys on different topics related to um, uh, safety, risk management, and compliance in uh, the trucking industry and, and really how to be effective. Um, you know, last time uh, you guys and I met, we were talking about data and the data usage uh, when uh, I was working uh, at SpeedGauge uh, a while ago. And uh, one of the challenges, uh, if you recall, that we all identify is, you know, what to do with the data. You know, uh, it's like everybody, the transportation companies and the insurance companies get the da data dumped on their lap and basically, Good luck to you. Yep. It doesn't matter if data come from the uh, telematic provider. It doesn't matter if the data come from, um, you know, uh, data aggregator. It doesn't matter where the data is coming from. For people to use the data, it's very complicated because they need to make sense of it and they need to you know, find solution for it. And it's, you know, just creating more problem rather than bringing solutions. And the other issue is that there is more data. You know, I don't know about yeah, you, John, maybe yeah. you would agree with this, that uh, safety people, especially in trucking, are being overwhelmed with all of the new sources of data, uh, telematics, the ELDs, the different GPS devices, and then programs like Speed Gauge dumping speed into it. Um, there is, as Guy just said, Gee, there's a huge amount of data coming at yeah. everybody every day. Yeah. yeah. Well, one, one of the to, things there's more to come. I think. Well, yeah. Well, one of the things, if I can add to it, and, and I get more feedback on Gee on this, is one of the things we're seeing is we're seeing more providers, telematics service providers, getting into the game here. So they're providing the hardware that goes in the truck, and yeah. we're seeing more carriers ending up with multiple devices throughout their fleet. So yeah. just as you said, Chris, you know, you've got this fire hose of data coming at you from one provider. Now maybe you've got three providers because you're switching from these guys to those guys. And now I'm still trying to manage all that data, but it's coming at me at different flows, different uh, levels and whatnot. And it's not all meaningful data. So now, as you said, Chris, it's just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. what, what happens, Guy, if the trucking companies don't manage well all of this data? Yeah, I know. I think it's it's a hard question, and you know, first uh, uh, they have to pay attention to the data because the data is there. Uh, it doesn't matter if they manage or manage not the data. The data is there, so they have to pay attention. There is a lot. There is a world out there of lawyers that say, "Hey, you know, you can do." Don't pay attention to the data, uh, uh, or don't uh, don't do anything with the data because if you know that the data is there, then uh, you are liable. The reality of it is that if you are in the class seven and eight, uh, or like you know heavy duty trucking or interstate trucking, basically you have going to have a ELD device in your uh, uh, in your truck in your cab, and so then uh, you cannot ignore it. That's a fundamental. You cannot ignore it. Okay, so then. It's important to do something with it, you know, and uh, and to leverage it. And the reality of it is, if you pay attention with the, to the data, then uh, you can really uh, make a uh, a difference to your bottom line. So, from my perspective, it's a win-win situation. You just need to understand it, you know, and uh, you need to help dealing with it. Well, so uh, Asenga just uh, was formed. Uh, from a number of people in trucking and risk management. And what we did is that we understood that there was a problem 
uh, in dealing with the data. You needed to have a, a, a solution that takes the data and make it active for you, to benefit you. So that, you know, there's more data and you take action with it based on KPIs that we can all agree on uh, automatically and at scale. And, uh, and, and, and we bring everybody within the organization together. As a result, are phenomenal. It just needs to be done and done right and at scale. And so that's how uh, my partner, uh, Jamie and uh, Mike, we came together. They, they had a, an initial solution looking at trying to uh, do one-off trading the data. And we decided to come together to build a software solution so that it can help transportation company makes a difference. One, save money in terms of losses and uh, reduce the number of accidents. Uh, and two, get uh, a better operational result overall. And it works both for transportation companies, self-insured companies, and insurance uh, uh, companies, because they all have the same problem. Right. Well, they all have too much damn data. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how to make it actionable. And yeah. as you alluded to earlier, if you don't do something with the data, the prosecuting mm -hmm. attorney is going to make you pay should there be a yeah. crash. And of course, we know exactly. that there's a crash. So, so and, yeah, good. I was just going to say, how does the Senga uh, help us manage all of this data? This, as John said, the fire hose of data yeah. coming at me. Yeah, that's a fair question. And I think the, the other really important point is we need to reduce the number of crashes on the road. It doesn't matter. You know, once you have a crash, I think we all have failed somewhere. And uh, so we need to prevent the number of accidents on the road. And if you look at the data published by the FMCSA, uh, is the number of accidents, there's more technology in cab, uh, but there's also more accidents. So we need to find a better solution. And here, where Arsendiga uh, came from. We looked at uh, the data and what we found is a couple of things. One, there's more accident today than there was 10 years ago, okay? Which is really interesting. Uh, there's more technology in uh, CAB and there's more training associated, but there's still more accident. So people are going to say, well, we, there's more miles driven, which is uh, uh, true but there's still more accident and more technology. So then the relationship doesn't work. And the other part of that is that the cost of accident continue to increase, both the cash lay, uh, uh, you know, the cash out from you know, fender bender or repair and all the kind of thing, and from the insurance uh, side where insurance costs continue to increase. The reason insurance costs continue to increase is because insurance companies are losing money on commercial auto. So, you know, uh, we, and so we looked at that for, uh, with my team and we decided, okay, well, what can we do to make a difference? If we try to do the same things that has been done for the last uh, uh, 10 years and rinse and repeat, we are going to continue to have increase in premium and increase in losses. And we have decided that what can be done, it can be done, something can be done about it. And that's where Asenga developed their software. And so what we do, we create an environment where we create accountability. We take the data, process it, make sure we manage and do some basic analysis to it. And then we create a chain of accountability within the organization. So not only, you know, one of the basic problems in transportation today, when there is an accident, uh, it's always a problem of the driver. Or at least people think it's always a problem with the driver. So we beat the crap out of the driver, if I may, uh, using my French. And, uh, and so we decided that, you know, the driver, other driver, uh, one of the uh, things we are realizing is that the driver uh, may know that he is doing something incorrect, maybe going too fast, maybe doing something incorrect, but he doesn't know at what scale he's doing that. Okay. So then it's to uh, providing with the right information at the right time. Just telling him that he's doing a bad job is not helpful. But at the same time, you need to involve his manager as part of uh, the uh, solution. And you need to involve the manager's manager. 
And so what we have created is a solution that automatically manages a relationship between the data, the driver, the manager's managers, and uh, the executive of the organization. So that's on the fleet side. And what we are seeing is tremendous results. We are basically seeing uh, you know, in uh, with the companies that have deployed our solution, 50% drop in insurable uh, accident. And we can achieve significant changes within you know, 90 days. Uh, and then uh, it can really improve uh, over a six to uh, 12 month period. Well, and if you can drop the accident rate by 50%, yeah. that's mm. a huge saving to everybody yeah. involved, the trucking company especially, uh, because their insurance rates should be more manageable for the right. But then the insurance company should love you as well. That's right. I mean, the thing is, is that you're making an external point. I was doing a graph and, you know, uh, we can, I could share it if you guys want to see it, but I was looking at, uh, based on, uh, you know, the cost, uh, the, you know, the rate of insurance increased year over year for the last five years. If you started with a $10,000 premium uh, five years ago, you should be paying today between fourteen and $16,000 in premium just because the cost of insurance has increased that much mm -hmm. per power yeah. unit, you know? Uh, and so the way transportation company have done, tr have tried to reduce uh, uh, their insurance premium is one by increasing the deductible. Okay. So that's one thing and reducing the, the top layer coverage. Okay. So then basically, you know, you can, you, uh, the, the way insurance premium has been managed is by reducing the protection of transportation companies. Yeah, it's true. Cool. And so then as an organization, we have decided we can effectively uh, make a difference. <laughs> And how are the insurance companies viewing this uh, new program? So I think that uh, a lot of what, you, if you look at the insurance uh, industry, uh, they are all looking at new solutions like ours, okay? Uh, and trying to understand what can be done and what can not be done. We have uh, already an insurance company that is using us and starting to see uh, that it's very useful for them to build a system of accountability and uh, to help them understand uh, the, uh, the behavior uh, of or the people they are insuring. Uh, the insurance company that we are working with is working with small to medium-sized fleet. And so uh, cannot manage the risk at scale. And so that's why they see us as a huge benefit to their organization. Uh, and so we, are, uh, we have been deployed with them for now six months and it start to show uh, interesting results in the number of uh, transportation companies that are, or fleet that are being uh, interested in learning more about the data and in managing uh, premium. So the, 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 the saving are significant across the board. And, in, and the other part of it, they will not, if, if they, we were not working with them, they could not manage the risk actively the way we do it because they don't have the manpower. What, what, what size of fleets does the Sango work for, for with, what, what does it benefit the most? Is there a certain range? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. I, you know, what we are finding is the fleet that already understand it's important to do risk management are the most effective of it. I mean, the issue when you think about it is, you know, everybody think that they want to reduce the number of accident and increase uh, their profitability, but very few are willing to do what it takes. Uh, to right. make that a reality. I mean, and we also, we are not for the people that just want to you know, put lipstick uh, out there. Right. Uh, right. We are for people that really uh, want to have an impact on their bottom line. Okay. For the so it's not so people. much about, it's, it's not so much about the size of the fleet. It's the mindset yeah. of the fleet. The mindset of the fleet. That's right. Yep. And yep. Uh, we work uh, with fleets that have a few thousand uh, vehicle as well as low as uh, fleets that have between 50 and, uh, you know, a hundred vehicle, uh, it's, um, uh, and, and in fact, with our insurance partner, uh, the fleets that are on the, or platform are between, you know, uh, owner operators to, uh, 20 to 25. So there's a full range, but the only way that can be done, 
uh, at scale is uh, with uh, a software solution like ours. If not, you, you don't have the you don't have the money, you don't have the resources. Right. Even a waiter that has a large amount of resources, uh, you know, it, it's so much that they can they can manage. And we, we work with. I'm just going to say we've been using the word fleet and 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 geared more around transportation. Will this will this um, resource work for other types of fleets like car fleets, construction fleets, different yeah, things, municipality think, fleets? Yeah, I think I think it it can work for uh, anybody that need to uh, do some uh, active risk management. You know, active risk management is really the fundamental that uh, we are talking about it and create a channel of accountability. And the, the, the interesting part of it, the real success of, of uh, this type of program is not to uh, fire driver, not to fire manager, is to make sure everybody is on the same page. Right. And when right. everybody on the same page, you see successes. And that's really uh, what we are uh, working on. Not only you see successes, you see quantifiable successes. There's two companies uh, that we are working with, one called uh, Delaware Valley uh, Floral Group, uh, that's a 150 to 200 power unit, uh, oh, and wow. another one called Bar, uh, that has over a thousand power unit. Both of them, uh, you know, uh, are willing to uh, provide testimonial to right. the, the work we are doing and to the amount, the significant amount of saving uh, that we are uh, we have uh, provided them. And so this, both, this could uh, even this could even work for for the company that Chris and I are going to create. That's last mile delivery on delivering baguettes and cheese whiz. <laughs> I know, John. You have your uh, you have your like a little squid to toast uh, with uh, cheese whiz. I I I, I yeah. know. This is, this is some pretty neat stuff. I I know Chris has got some more on the top of his head here. No, there's nothing on the top of my head. No, but uh, so how does a key give us a little bit about how this actually works? What yeah. would a so we, uh, transportation yeah. professional see? So uh, what we do is that we take uh, the data either from you know uh, telematic providers or from a uh, data aggregator like speed gauge uh, and uh, you know, there's a new one called terminal driven like others you know so we take uh, uh, data from data aggregator or from directly from a telematic provider and we plug that into our system okay from that we extract uh, and we uh, do some basic analysis looking at a relevant incident you know it could be uh, based on speeding but it could be based on uh, video uh, behavior uh, that has been uh, create problematic, you know, uh, and they look like a new uh, uh, video uh, solution uh, data point that's coming out, coming uh, related to drowsy driving, some, and it's starting to be very effective. So you have all the uh, many data points for heartbreaking, speeding, uh, behavioral drowsy driving, things like that, lane departure. So you have all those data points coming into our system, and you know you can. Nobody can process all the data points all the time. So what we do, we uh, process the data and identify the most relevant ones. And we start create an engagement process, uh, both with the driver, driver manager, and uh, executive within the organization. And within the insurance industry companies, we work with you know, uh, the fleet owner, uh, the insurance sponsor, and uh, sometimes even the producer. So we have all created a chain of engagement within different organization. And we make sure that uh, they do uh, the right engagement with the right person at the right time. For example, we are able to tell a manager, hey, you need to uh, engage with this driver. And uh, we may also try, are able to make sure that the manager has effectively engaged with the driver at the right time. So then it creates a whole chain of accountability that you can review and make sure that everybody is on the same page. So we, it's not just about the driver. It's not just about the manager. It's not about just about the executing setting up the policy. It's about everybody working together to achieve a result. And then we publish 
uh, the the result on a you know weekly and monthly basis, so that can people can make sure that the work has been done and that there is a change in the number of accidents. So, so that uh, that uh, yeah. So this is all driven by software, so that the manager can all see software driven. It's all software driven because the thing is, is that if it was not, okay, it would be too costly. And so then we realized that we can put a lot of, uh, we can build a software platform to handle all of it. And uh, we also uh, are uh, starting to put some, uh, you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence on the back end of it because so that it becomes more effective in understanding uh, what is and what is not relevant and what needs to be addressed and what are the behavior that we need to deal with. So I, one of the last questions, is yeah. this available to trucking companies today? It's available to trucking company today. If they go to our website at uh, asenga.com, uh, uh, they will not find a lot of information, but they can email us. We are, uh, our website is a little bit, has been taken a little bit uh, a while to get up. But, the, but just to make sure you, you guys understand, we have been testing that solution for two years, uh, 18 months to two years. So that's why we have the results that we have. It's not just, you know, uh, you know saying that without proof. We have proof <laughs> we have, we have people, uh, that are able to, to tell you, hey, here's a, what the savings are, and the both in terms of uh, money not spent and uh, in terms of uh, and operational uh, abilities. So there, and, and your cool. contact info is in the show notes down below. So people who are interested in learning more can reach out to you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we are all open to have discussion, but the idea is fundamentally, uh, we are trying to bring innovation to where there is a, a basic problem, too many accidents, and too many investment into uh, safety that is not resulting in less accident. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I've been telling a lot of my clients and is to offshore because they're getting so much data at the moment. One or two people in a safety department can't handle all the data yeah. and properly react to it. Right. And it's too expensive to staff the department. Yeah here in North right. America with personnel. So yeah. I've been saying, hey, offshore this. Mm -hmm. To me, without knowing the costs involved of your product, this yeah. sounds, anytime a software solution comes out, it is generally, um, almost every time, less expensive than even offshoring uh, mm -hmm. the product yeah, of humans. I mean, it starts uh, uh, around the nine or $10 per truck per month and go up from there, you know? Uh, so people can, can start at a very affordable way and it, it goes up from there, depending on the number of data points they want us to deal with. And at the end of the day, it's, uh, but you, even in offshoring, you still need to buy, to build the processors and the oh, system yeah. that, that, that keep ability. And, uh, uh, unless you do that, it's not working. So our solution is taking care of not only, uh, uh, you know, ingesting the data, but making sure people taking action proactively. We are a very proactive uh, solution. Uh, and so it's not for everybody. It's only for the people that want change, you know. Mm -hmm. the, only for the people who want lower insurance rates, um, who only want less crashes so they have fewer headaches. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. not for everybody. <laughs> we want... I'm not being we want those, Yeah. Well, we want those forward thinkers, those, those that they, they want to reduce these things for the right reason, not exactly. just for a monetary purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think the companies that will be intrigued by this are the ones that are safety focused right yes. from the CEO down. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ones that are safety focused, the ones that understand that, you know, it's not just because of the driver. It's everybody has to work together. I think that if you start with a basic principle and, and you know what we are finding, it increased driver retention. Okay. okay. I mean, that's oh, sure. a funny point. Okay. Because in fact, uh, it's done the right way. Exactly. And when we, we don't have, yeah. 
And when we know the driver turnover is 50 to uh, 70% or even 100%, mm -hmm. you may want to look at you know, better solutions than what's out there. Yeah, and anything that reduces driver turnover um, effectively can save yep, a yep. company just a ton, a ton of money. Yep, exactly. Gee, thanks for coming back onto the show. And for yeah, thank you. Who are interested, Guy's contact info is down in the show notes below. Reach out if you are a forward thinking, safety conscious company and would like more information. That's right. Thank you very much, uh, John. Thank you very much, Chris. And I hope everybody uh, don't mind my uh, French accent. And thanks, Guy. That was awesome. If you want to get uh, some information from Guy, his contact info is down below. John and I would like to thank you for hanging out with us this week on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Thanks so much.